all right what's going on everybody this is going to be part two of the overview of what i've already got done in my trailer so it's getting hot out and i thought i'd show y'all how i did the ac today so when i bought the cargo trailer it already had the vent up in this top left corner uh, just a, a small it was actually a three inch hole uh, anyway so I, I screwed another piece of of plywood to this that way I could get my my hole saw to center for a four inch hole and uh, I cut out the four inch hole there that way I could get the dryer piping to go up there but the AC I'm using is uh, a winter 13,000 BTU AC and I wanted the portable one I didn't want to do the the window AC because I wanted it to be totally inside my my trailer without a lot of rigging to get the water set up where it'll drain out and stuff like that and so that's why I went with this one because where I park a lot of times uh, you can't have stuff hanging out your trailer and I mean uh, people are probably gonna try and mess with it and just stuff like that and plus it looks a lot it's, it's a lot cleaner to just have one vent showing on the outside of your trailer instead of AC hanging out of it and so <clears throat> winter 13,000 BTU air conditioner it comes with this these hose setups except for this one I bought that at Lowe's just uh just go to like the the sink section and you can find a little hose like this uh, mine i got six foot long and then cut it to size and uh, screwed it to the frame with a hose clamp underneath and uh so yeah this one you want to get a dual hose set up that way you're not pulling a vacuum on your on your trailer and then you're bringing more hot air in because you've got that vacuum so this is the intake for this air conditioner which goes down right here I've started insulating the bottom of it because this is kind of it turns it into like a part it turns it into like a this this hose here turns into like a a wall of your trailer almost so you'll probably want to insulate that too or I sure do uh, so so I've started insulating it there so that's where it breathes in I cut cut a four inch hole in the floor and they sell, they, uh, it comes with a, uh, a mounting, a little adapter. And so I mounted that to the floor with some stainless steel screws. I use like, uh, it's called through the roof. I use that to make my seal around this. It's waterproof and it's just, it's great stuff. That's why I use to seal all these. So there's my drain pipe right beside it going through the floor. There's the intake for it. and then the exhaust right there and I've got this wrapped one time with this insulation and I'm gonna come back I'm gonna wrap it a second time with this insulation to make the whole setup more efficient uh, because this tube it gets like shoot man uh, 100 degrees when well when it's 100 degrees outside and so yeah the more you insulate that the better it's gonna be the more you insulate this the better it's gonna be and just route that through the floor this constantly drains out of out of this this here so I'll never have to drain it myself there's another drain down lower and if you use that one you don't have to use this you can you can just put the plug they give you in this and you can use that one and it'll save the water it'll hold it in a reservoir in the bottom of this air conditioner and when the reservoir gets full this air conditioner will shut off and then you'll have to take the air conditioner out and manually empty that drain but of course it's a way better setup to just use this where it drains constantly and so that's what I did now my trailer is a 7x16 well this air conditioner with the insulation I've got even being 13,000 BTUs it wouldn't cool the whole trailer it would not cool the entire trailer efficiently the way it was 
And so that's why I framed that wall back there and used the 2x4 stud insulation. If I could do all this again, I would not use I would not use this blue insulation up here because it's like not even half the value, the R value of that, that R13. This is like a R5 or R6 or something like that. Uh, so I would not use that again. What I would do, the, the reason why I didn't use it to begin with is because there was only, there's only, you only have a one inch void between the back of this plywood and the aluminum sheathing that they put on the outside of the trailer. So if I was to do this again, what I would do is I would come in here and I would take all these boards down like I did. I would take all this plywood down. I'd install a, a three quarter or a one inch fern strip, uh, you know, one inch wide by three quarters thick and, and however, however tall the height is for that. I'd install that on all these all these studs down through here I'd install the fern strips on all the studs down the whole wall to have this plywood another inch or at least three quarters out and then that would be enough to for me to buy some faced face two by four stud wall insulation but like 24 inch on center because that's what these are and then staple it, uh, staple it or nail it all to those all to those studs with the fern strips and then put this back on and you're only going to lose an inch and a half of width out of the whole trailer but your insulation value is going to be twice what this blue stuff right here gives you right now and so that blue stuff man uh i see everybody using it that's why i use it on mine but it's really not that great uh, you're gonna save yourself in the long run if you use if you use that two by four stud wall insulation. Um, it's way worth it, and it's even from what I see, it's gonna come out cheaper. I've already spent like a thousand dollars in this blue foam board insulation, man. And from just some rough math I did earlier, I think I could have got all that two by four stud wall insulation for for like 500 for the whole trailer so half the price but be twice as good and so yeah that's what i would use if i was going to do this again but uh but i get but you would have to have it you'd have to have it sealed off pretty quickly because it, it'll be hard to 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 breathe that stuff for a long time because that that stuff right there is fiberglass and you know it's uh, hard on you and so yeah but uh this is what i'm using now this is working this is cooling it this is cooling my trailer at a rate of about 13 degrees an hour so even worst case scenario it's 100 degrees outside it's 100 degrees in the trailer this is going to get it to where you can come in here where you can be in here comfortably in two hours which i mean i'm in the dead sun in the south it's getting hot that that's good enough for me man i can live with that if it can be 73 down in here and 74 in here in in two hours that's great for me it usually don't get 100 100 degrees anyway but sometimes it does but so worst case scenario two hours and you'll be good but yeah so that's just a little show of of how you can efficiently set up your your ac in here and yeah just in case y'all needed to see how to do it and and a good setup this this air conditioner here costs uh in the winter time you can get it for 350 right now it's going for about 450 all right see y'all next time